This tree is red elm or slippery elm, also called Elmus rubra. Um, elms have a pretty distinctive bark that kind of looks like puzzle pieces that are gone together. They're, it's a little bit flaky. It's a straight and tall tree. And in our flora, we have three species of elms. We have Elmus alata, Elmus americana, and Elmus rubra. So this is Elmus rubra. It has the largest leaves of the three elms and it likes to have the wettest environments. So you'll normally find red elm or slippery elm in the wettest environments. Um, so bottomland hardware or other wetland areas. So some characteristics about elms are they have an unequilateral base or oblique leaf base. And that's something that you can see. You see the bottom, the leaf base, those two sides don't join exactly symmetrically. Um, and red elm or slippery elm has the largest leaves of all of the elms. They are extremely scabrous or sandpaper feeling. You can actually hear how scabrous they are. And if I pull a leaf off, I can stick it to my shirt um, because that scabrousness or those hairs um, stick to my shirt. You can also stick it to your fingers um, and it'll stay put. So an oblique or unequilateral leaf base. They also have a really distinctive leaf margin. Let me get this in focus. The leaf margin is doubly serrate. So that means that they have teeth and then the teeth have teeth. So it's a doubly serrate leaf margin that you can see there. Very distinct veining. This is the underside of the leaf and you can see it has very strong Venation, so that's another um, good thing to know about slippery elm. The um, so almost rubra, rubra means red, and it is in the Ulmaceae family, so the elm family. Another good character for separating slippery elm from American elm is by breaking off one of these flakes of bark and looking at it in cross section. So American elm will have layered bark of light and dark, whereas slippery elm has just all dark. It's not distinctly, it's layered, but it's all, all the layers are dark brown. Another character is that on slippery elm or red elm, the buds are short and very dark, um, almost black in color. So that's a good way to know elm. Even these um, small twigs are very, very scabrous or rough. So, and you can see in the sunlight that this is a short, um, very dark um, leaf bud. So, almost rubra, rubra means red. Um, elm has been affected, used to be planted as a street tree, a really important street tree in cities, especially in the Midwest, um, but it was knocked back by Dutch elm disease. It has not really come into North Carolina, um, so not nearly as common um, as it is in North Carolina. And, what else can I tell you about elms? Um, they are important, have wildlife value. They eat the, the elm seeds. And um, they also have these long drip tip leaves. So that's an important character to distinguish them. So red elm or slippery elm, usually found in wet areas, has large, the largest leaves of the three elms. Bark that is not layered, but not light and dark layered, just all dark. Um, and a really common, very scabrous leaves, and a common tree in our wet areas, sometimes planted as a street tree. Oh, slippery elm comes from the twigs, which are mucilaginous. So if I broke off this twig and I'm feeling it, it's got a little bit of, a little bit of slime inside. So this had medicinal use um, to treat sore throats, and you can buy slippery elm um, throat lozenges that have that sil that silky mucilaginous um, kind of interior that makes it um, it's a traditional use for sore throats so that's that is slippery elm